I went to school in Boston for a couple of years at Emerson College, and I absolutely loved the city. So here's what you should know before you go to Boston. Whenever someone tells me that they're going to Boston and asks me, what should I do? The very first thing I always tell them to do is walk the Freedom Trail. To be able to walk among these places that held such significance in the Revolutionary War is absolutely amazing. And I'm a huge history nerd, so for me, it was like that times 10. <laughs> the whole trail is actually fairly long. It spans from the Boston Commons all the way up to Bunker Hill. So maybe take a couple days to do it instead of just one and maybe not walk the whole thing. So you can rest up and do other things there too. And the trail is really hard to miss because it's marked by red bricks on the ground and it spans the whole way. It's basically the yellow brick road for the Revolutionary War in Boston. Along the way, it stops at a cemetery where John Hancock, Sam Adams, and Paul Revere are all buried. And then goes to the Quincy Market and the Old State House and all the way up to Bunker Hill where there's a monument that even if you're not huge into history, and you are fine with walking up a whole bunch of stairs, you should check out because you get kind of a cool view of the city. And even if you don't go up the monument, Bunker Hill itself is very beautiful and I recommend going there. To get the full Revolutionary War experience, go dump tea in the Boston Harbor and experience the Boston Tea Party with the Boston Tea Party Museum. There's actors that take you through the night of what happened or as much as we know. And these actors are so passionate about their jobs. This is the actress who was with us, and she was amazing. It was so cool to learn in this immersive experience. And I know I just said learn, even though we're talking about a vacation. But that's part of the vacationing, is to learn about where you are. Especially if you have kids, this is something great to do. We had some kids who were absolutely enthralled by this. And it was really cool. I a grown adult and I was still enthralled, so why wouldn't it be fun for kids? This really isn't a must do on the list of things if you're going to Boston, especially if you only have limited time, but I still really enjoyed it and really recommend it because it's something a little different, but so much fun. And as long as you're at the Boston Tea Party, you might as well head up to the North End and get Mike's Pastries. Their cannolis are amazing. And not just cannolis, but all types of pastries. Boston is known for Mike's Pastries, so make sure you go there, because this is a must-do. Right around Halloween time, I had some family visit, and so we took a ghost tour of Boston. Now, I know this isn't everyone's cup of tea, but you get to walk around with someone holding a lantern telling stories, ghost stories, of Boston. And you get to go to those places that the supposed hauntings took place. So it's pretty interesting and a great way to see the city with a guide for not too expensive. And don't forget to head down to Fenway Park where the Red Sox play. Even if you're not a huge baseball fan or you don't go to a game for whatever reason, it's still really cool to go and see. I went there a few times and I took my family too because they just wanted to see this monumental place that's just so well known. Now, almost everything in Boston is accessible by the T. This is their subway system. They have Charlie cards, like if you're familiar with New York's, is Metro cards. And these Charlie cards are what they use to get around. They can be used with the T or in their buses too. So you can get a Charlie card, you can pay as you go, or you can get like a three a day pass or something, all depending on what you want and how long you're there. But this is a really good way to get around because it's all connected. Finally, the last place that's an absolute must go, the Boston Commons and Public Gardens. This is like the Central Park of Boston. Now, chances are you'll end up here anyways because it's so centrally located. But there's a lot of things to do here. They have dog parks, they have festivals, if you go during the right times. They have swan boats in the summer. And in the frog pond at Halloween time, they light a whole bunch of jack-o'-lanterns and have jack-o'-lantern extravaganza. And in the winter, you can go ice skating. I went ice skating with some friends and we had a blast. And because you're already right there, you might as well check out some houses on Beacon Hill because that's where the rich people live and those houses are beautiful. And obviously, there's still so many different things you can do in Boston. I mean, it's a huge city. But these are just some of my favorite things that I did when I was there. I've included links to everything I talked about today in the description below. If you liked what you saw, please hit that like button, consider subscribing, and have a great trip to Boston. Music